All right, you're asking for it, so here it is. Epicast. Listen to this. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the DP Quarantine's second edition. Uh, we out here on our porches trying to bring you some entertainment because basically we're bored. All right, <laughs> we ain't got that going on. I don't have an athlete, we don't have a number. We just out here finding interesting people to talk to. Uh, I am half of your host, Tanner Ed Bailey. I'm joined as always with my co-host Dave Brace. He say what up to the people. Uh, what's good with you people? Uh, <laughs> we are the drinking partners. And uh, if you're looking for us, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com slash partners pod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, LipSync, Google Play, and Spotify under Drinking Partners. And you can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Partners Pod. Um, man, we've been, uh, we've been recording a, a long time, and uh, we've been asking y'all. Yeah. We will continue to ask you, even in this, uh, you know, this 2D <laughs> format, used to just hearing the voice. Now you get this. You get to see the plea. You get to see the the get real. Like, I'm real with this. All right, please hop on uh, iTunes, uh, hop on Facebook, rate and review. Uh, that's how we know we're doing well. That's how we let others know that we're doing well, and that's how we continue to do well, man. So please hop on iTunes, hop on Facebook, rate and review. Listen, you love us. You see us in public, just like you're looking at us now. You tell us that you love us. Now, at the click of a button, and you got time. We know you got time because you ain't got nowhere to be. You know, tell the internet, tell the world, all right? Tell everybody that Drinking Partners is what's up. Tell them that we've been sitting out on our porches with our kids playing in, their, in our yards <laughs> trying to bring you entertainment. I'm such a bad example of a human right now, drinking on the porch in front of my kids. But I'm happy, man. And you, you know, you don't get to see us often. But as you can see, we do have always our guests. Uh, we got to bring our guests. You know, I'm going to introduce you. We got... Alex Bart, COO of HereCore and board member of the 25 Carrick Ave Project. Say what up to the people. What's up, people? How you doing, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, you hey, on man. camera with the what's up to the people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, so for the folks that don't know, uh, HereCore um, has been running, you know, the sound and the stage for Fresh Fest. Um, Fresh Fest, uh, the last two years, man, and like I like, listen, there would it, there would have been no Fresh Fest like without Herecore, man. Like the shit that they came in oh, and yeah. did, and the way that they did it on some jury rig, like yo, we <laughs> <laughs> like, we we had a we had a we had a very little bit to work with, and they had a whole lot of effort. And if you if you saw the event, uh, you know you know it turned out well, and uh, a large. A very large uh, portion of that uh, goes to here core. So I'm um, super excited to have uh, Alex uh, ha- have you here um, on the cast. Um, what you drinking on over there? Yo, know, I'm drinking the the ultra locale uh, dogfish head, slightly mighty. Mm. Ooh, my, my girls got me up. My girls got me on the keto diet. I can actually drink a couple of these. What, what is the what is the what keto is the diet? diet? Yeah, the keto diet. Is it meat and cheese. Is it like a is like it meat and cheese. cheese? Yeah, like you just you gotta not eat carbs. It's like super low carb. So, you so figure, what's, that, what's the difference between that and the Atkins diet? I don't I know, man. I never did the Atkins diet. I never did a diet, to be honest. But I did this keto <laughs> diet. So I'm so the keto we're married, meat we're and cheese, married no in carb. A month. Yeah, we're getting married in a month. So we're like, yo, we gotta. We gotta Congratulations! Oh, you thank, thank you. I'm, I'm marrying so a you, hell of a you, cook. She's a good cook. So she come up with she all the keto food. <laughs> no, no, you vegetables, you know, green vegetables, kale, <laughs> you know, zucchini, yeah, zucchini, and then and then a lot of meat and cheese, mm. and eggs. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Wifey, you'll be running the diet thing. Like, if, if it wasn't for them, I would eat cereal, pop tarts, yep. and some type of chicken. That was, that's what I would have. <laughs> yep. Well, that's my specialty. I cook a chicken all day long. Sit out on the grill. Oh, like I got, a whole chicken? Yeah, I like a whole chicken. Chicken special, legs, special. chicken thighs, uh, ribs. Yeah. Holy shit. So, not chicken to, ribs? Cooked cook some ribs yesterday, mm. yeah. Well, you cooked some ribs? Uh, so I cooked some ribs yesterday, too. I was a little disappointed. I did not um, I did not smoke them. In, like, Well, I didn't flip them enough, and I didn't spray them down. So, mm-hmm. like... 
the outside got a little too little too dry, like for you know what I mean. But then, like, yeah, I feel you. I feel you, man. The same thing happened to me. Dried out. Yeah, just like that smoker is a little. It's rough. It's 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 a, it's a you know it's a process. You know what I mean? Like you don't just go and you don't. You don't perfect ribs, like I mean, it's a, it's always a work in process, and it doesn't matter how long you've been cooking ribs, you always gonna feel a little like I could probably do this a little better. You know what I mean, like, yeah. um, what what do you what do you two find most important, the texture or the sauce with the ribs? I'm a sauce guy. Mm. See, I'm I'm a firm believer that you shouldn't need sauce if you cook the ribs right. Okay, you have that. It should, be, it should be an option. It should be an option. The sauce is the you sauce is like the, 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 sauce the, the cherry on top. Yeah, the sauce is the cherry on top. If you do it right, you get offended when you put when they put the sauce on. Mm. Like, come on, you ain't even cool. taste them first. Yeah, you gotta taste them first. Don't get the sauce. You know. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't sauce my ribs without it. Yeah, I mean, bite into the mother. You come to my crib and put sauce on my ribs, fam. Do you see any barbecue sauce laid out? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that big pot of sauce? With the with the dipstick in it, you know you come to see the big pot of sauce with the the twirly dip. That's the real flick of the wrist, and you know with the lemon, the one lemon floating. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, they just got yeah. a mean sauce over there. Uh-huh. Okay, what you what you uh, what you drinking on over there, man? I got the uh, the Brooklyn Lager, man. Happy, I mean, Hoppy Amber Lager. Just yeah, wifey went and grabbed it. She went and grabbed it, man. Okay, I was, okay. Yeah, I mean, shout, shout out, shout out to uh, Geo G- Garrett Oliver out there. Yeah, you know I mean, out there. Shout making- out to Garrett, man. It's good to. It's it's funny just piggybacking on him when you get wifey involved with the diet. She ain't on the beer now, so like every now and again, mm-hmm. I come home to like a little surprise, and it's good that she don't be getting no BS. She, that's the I man. You know, I see light at the crib. There's the real keto beer right there. Like Michelob Ultra. Like, Michelob is a chaser. Yeah. That's- yeah. <laughs> this is uh I heard you talking about Coors Light on the last show with Justin Strong. That's, 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 that's the real drink. That's the like, real that's, light yeah, beer. You, you bring that out just like when you don't really want to drink, but you just you just like <laughs> you ain't you you just don't right. want no. <laughs> eating all that meat and cheese, he got to get the toxins out. He's going to piss all that out. He's going to yep. piss all uh-huh. the meat, all this cheese out. <laughs> yeah, 38 Michelobes for Memorial Day. Yeah, 38. <laughs> you got to hydrate yourself. It's a marathon. Um, so, yeah. you know, so I, I got this Love City. Um, they sent us a uh, little care package. I knew he was going to. Um, got the and, flex. Uh, they're out of, uh, they're out of, they're out of Philly. Um, and this is uh, a crazy yeah. ass Haiti. So the first day, uh, the first thing I had was this. That looked uh, delicious. It, like the first thing I had was this tart beef <laughs> plum, right? Like so, they they hit us up and was like, "Hey, yo, you like beer?" I was like, "Yeah." And then like the next day, the UPS dude just dropped off a box of beer. I was like, "Oh shit!" Um, and uh, yeah, this I, I was you know I was a little like reserved. I was like, I ain't know what to expect. Like they just kind of you know what I mean like ah this came. She, they ran down on you, gave you the number. Yeah, yeah, like. <laughs> It is a little too easy, but uh, yo, this <laughs> like the tart beets plum is is, is phenomenal. Um, it's light. It's uh, it's got some plum to it. Um, me and Alex were talking earlier, and he was talking that you know, like it was uh, like that that Heller. Uh, it was a Heller watermelon, it's like a wheat ale, um, but with plum yeah. in it. Twenty twenty first amendment. Yeah, that's twenty. Wheat ale with plum in it. Mm. It's a wheat ale with plum in it. This tart beets plum, and then this is a hazy, and it's. It is fucking phenomenal, man. Like, I like it. It looks like good. you can put a spoon through that. You can just drink yeah. that with a spoon. The, the can don't like the can don't match up. I'm a, I'm a just like if I'm gonna critique in any way, the can don't make it look like what the, like this is. Like this is. <laughs> oh, it's like Shorty came over in just a trench coat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a trench coat can. Like you don't you don't know what lies beneath. <laughs> Drop it and it's ooh, boom, like, <laughs> boom. <laughs> ooh, like, that what that you would that girl. So yeah, shout out to them, man. Shout out to that. And like I said, there's a there's some of that there's there's some of that waiting for you over there at work hard. You know what I mean, so yeah, no, I got to make yeah, it up. Mask, to add mask, and do some up, stuff mask up and get out there because uh, we still, you know, the road is still out there. Folks is just uh, out here mm-hmm. wandering around like it ain't. Oh, but, people wilding. You know what I mean? So, man, uh, grab that, you know, that that contactless. You see how we did that contactless transfer? But, mm-hmm. uh, we got we to gotta actually interview Alex. We just been here drinking. <laughs> well, that's part I'm of his appeal. Too. 
I'm good with that too. See, they know the fresh, fresh sound. They seen what goes on, so they know his work is good. Now they want to know about the man. You're true. But tell them about how you got into it. How, how did how did you get involved with Hero? How did that how did that come to be, rather? Man, that story goes back a long time to like 2003. There was a studio over in the north side called AAM, and I think Mr. Smalls has something going on in there now. But you got do you guys remember a band called Bean? Bean, Bean? Achilles Achilles Soon. Beam, Dave Throckmorton, uh, Steve Landay on the Space Base. They threw a show in this little recording studio, and I just got a ticket to it. Uh, saw what was going on there. Two days later, showed up, met the owner, and he was like, yeah, you can come. You know, I actually recorded an album in that studio. I just wanted to record music. At the time, I was probably 22, 23. And... Uh, yeah, it, it kind of went from there. There's there's a lot of stories over the years, but at the end of the day, I ended up working with that same guy again on this Herecore project uh, back in 2016. He was going to, to the Olympics in Brazil. He was working. And we kept the Deutschland Music Festival <laughs> open okay. while he went to Brazil and did the Olympics. Since then, I've been just pushing forward, pushing forward. You guys came in at some point, made the fresh tech. Great. What is what is your what is your background like? You know what I mean, like how did you know? Because you you're just like yeah. So I went to a concert and then but he, he left about twelve. He left about twelve years. <laughs> yada, yada, there's yada, a lot yada. of years. <laughs> a lot of years. Yeah, twelve yeah. years unaccounted for. Like hold on. <laughs> it's so it's so much. <laughs> what are you like? What what is yeah? What is the How'd you get? You know what I mean? Because and and what is he? You know? What and what do you? <laughs> Shit, man. I'm just, oh, oh. You yeah, every you day like I'm just trying right to... now. Yeah, you know I mean, you sound <laughs> you sound like the dude that goes in and and says a couple words yeah. and people just do it. You know, secure like secure the contracts. <laughs> he secured the contracts. True yeah. <laughs> signatures. <laughs> he got Dr. Dre released. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> back in the, a couple <laughs> times. One time, so I worked at the you know the New Hazel Theater on the north side. I worked there for a long time, like eight years, and. uh we had, we started to have weddings there and there was this, there was this wedding. People still make a joke about me over there that I, that I, the, the preacher died and I married the bride and the groom. I got my, you know, got my or, ordination online real quick and went out and married the bride and the groom, saved the wedding. Cause you know, we'll just do a little bit of, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, you know, nothing. Man, man. So what, <laughs> So how did it go from, so you said you all were working in a studio and now obviously doing the, the audio for larger scale events. Was it, you were, you know, throughout your travels, you're doing all this stuff and you at these large events, you're like, yo, this sound could be better. I could do this. <laughs> like, what if this wedding had incredible sound, incredible yeah. audio? It, it does become a curse of sorts because a lot of times you just go to an event and enjoy the event and walk away. But for me, I go and I see, all right, this thing done on that different. Mm -hmm. You know, wish this sounded a little different. Um, we're really fortunate in Pittsburgh, man. We got a lot of really good artists, a lot of really good production companies, you know, Hearcore included in that, um, and a lot of really talented people. So we almost get, like, desensitized to it. But quality of experience is, you know, so important, I think. And I think we're going to see that soon enough here online where people are going to want, you know, like Buzzy's having me record my audio on this phone so you don't have to listen to the Zoom audio. You know, quality <laughs> matters. Quality matters, and that's what that's what we try to focus on. I mean, so, like, I mean, but that's, you know, so, again, so that's what makes the world go round, man. Like, production and the folks that know how to, like, so quality, you know, Epicast, like, you know, shout out to Buzzy and Epicast. Uh, shout out to Nick. I mean, they they sorted this with the with this very quality first, you mm -hmm. know, like mission. It was like, you know, whatever it is that we put out, it's got to sound good and it's got to look good. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, and then, you know, it, 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 you know, you realize it doesn't really, like, it matters. Talent matters. Yes, talent matters. But if that talent mm -hmm. sounds garbage, then you can't get the message across. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's hard when, you know, you land a joke, but like the audio is so jumbled that you didn't get the punchline. You know what I mean? Like, so... Mm -hmm. You know, you realize that you need, you know, like you, you need tech first. Or you need the quality to transmit. You know I mean, like, so, you know, I guess like, like 
I guess in your journey, like what was, how did you get into the event production? Like what was like, what was like the first pre- event that you, you produced and like, why? Like, yeah, you know I mean, like how did that, that come about? I mean, like. Uh, that's a big question, man. There's been a lot over the years. I think probably the first thing that I really took a hand in was uh, Vanessa German show that she did at the Hazel Theater. It was called Testify. And it was a one woman play, poetry, a little bit of music. And um, I helped her design the set. I helped her kind of work through the, the narrative and what she was saying. And then actually produce it on stage, filmed it. I actually reached out to her the other day. I said, I have all this film archive from this show. We never, we never did anything with it. Um, but man, it was like, I was like the technical director. Helped her get the good sound, get the good video. And that was, that was maybe the first one, you know, in Pittsburgh at least. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I don't and he's in, but so as far as audio, what do you think when people are doing live events, what's like the, the biggest mistake you see people make? Like, what's the one thing that if you could just like tell them like, yo, this is what you need to secure first. If you try and do like a live event. Well, it can all go, it can all go to shit really fast. In a lot of ways, <laughs> what we're the best at is reacting under high stress, you know, like, yo. We, if it is what's it Murphy's law, if it's gonna go wrong, it will. Yo, we mm-hmm. we had we 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 had a stage that dr- got dropped off. The motherfucker was way too small. It was on the wrong side of the field. The stage field was from was, a play school set. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was a very it was like the it was like a la- a large Lego set. Like it was terrible. It was it was on the wrong side. The field was muddy. And the, the tent was way too small. And, like, y- y- y'all came through <laughs> and turned it into, a, like, we a got it. festival. It was like a, re- like it was a real festival. Like, ain't nobody, ain't nobody say nothing about nothing. And, like, yeah. I don't, I, like, it's wild when people talk about Fresh Fest because I'm like, do y'all know what the fuck? <laughs> That's, that shit. Well, like- if, I didn't, if I didn't tip my hat to Bo Collins because he's who – He's who engineered the coming out of the because wasn't it like pouring rain too? Then we had another show that day and I wasn't there. And I remember Bo was on the charge on that show. And so I remember was, hearing it, about it, but it, I never knew how bad it actually it was. It rained. It rained the whole week before. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was funny as shit, but the field was wet. It, like it was drenched. So like yeah. where we had the stage, we couldn't like we had to move it to a drier space. So that the you know the artist wouldn't get electrocuted. You know what I mean, it was like more of an issue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> issue. You know what I mean, but like we had that insurance. Yeah, and like the the, the <laughs> folks that came in, and it was a cheap stage, and it was already built. So it was like we had to. So we ended up having to like recruit the muscle dudes that was in the gym to come out and like <laughs> lift the stage all at one time and take it to the back. And then the tent was too small. So they had to like break the legs down weird and like set them up over and like they, they stretched it and then they took the pieces and they set them up in a way that like, bruh, the show must go on. The yo, show it, must it, go it on. was. And then like, and then even stayed later because we had like sound issues like with the, uh, mm-hmm. the you know, not the sound issues, but uh, uh, electric, the electric. The electric blue. Went out. That was my, that was my charger. <laughs> that's that's yo. That's you how broke the camel's back. Is like that one charger. I plugged my phone up. Now like, ah, <laughs> it man. blew the whole thing. No, I, I gave my charger to Mike, and he plugged his phone up, and it went down. I was like, ah, man. Yeah. How was that? <laughs> yo. But that's that's just the thing, man. I mean, if it's gonna go wrong, it will. So for a a technician, like the most important thing, one, you see, there's like a stereotype about the the audio guy that's just an asshole and like not very cool like disgruntled like for us it's a big game you know you can't get mad you can't get mad about things going wrong and so you know what we try to instill in everybody that works with us is like yo this is gonna be messed up we're all in this together you know and we got a whole phone chain that comes right back up to me and when it hits me it's like boom and we just divert resources and usually in the summertime like this time of year festivals every weekend shows all week long you know, we're doing like five shows a day sometimes in the summer and we got all these people out and all this gear out all over the place. And it just, it, it can be really fun, man. But it's like playing risk or something. 
you know, again, like you got strategy, you got to move people, you got to, you got to help where there's a deficiency. You got to, you know, and you hope at the end of the day, you, you've done a good job and that people like yourselves are happy. That's the other part. Keeping y'all definitely keeping do a wonderful happy. job. Yeah, it, well, ain't, it ain't people like ourselves. It's people like the motherfuckers that came. Cause like, <laughs> 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 we, we just working, we all working together. Shit. Like, yeah. and we don't, y'all dealing with like magic. I still, I don't know how electricity works. I just believe, <laughs> I just believe that what you're saying is true. I don't know what information <laughs> to give you. Like how, how, like in your position, it's gotta be tough. You're working with novices all the time. Like, yeah, you guys are professionals, but the people throwing the events typically don't know audio and stuff like that. Maybe like how often do you do they under prepare you for the scope of, of the project? Well, we're real I'm really at this point, I'm really good at finding where the problems are gonna be, but more importantly, finding where there's more potential. So mm-hmm. you know, people have an idea, it's like, yeah, and you can do this with that idea. And then, you know, you get the good producer and they get exciting excited about it and the coolest thing about my job is that every day pretty much except recently every day is like working with people to be the best you know to do the best put their best foot forward so for years and years and years i've just got to be around so many people that are always just trying to be the best that can be a pretty inspiring thing so like what is what are what are the ways that you improve in this field you know what I mean, like, what is it that what is, what is mm-hmm. it that sets you know sets you apart? How do you you know keep that edge? Well, you got to learn. You got to learn from other people, and you have to you have to take it into your own hands. I mean, I'm not going to push anybody to learn something. You know, I might say like, here's a resource, or you're going to mix on this console this weekend. Here's the PDF of the information guide on how it works, but it takes a certain kind of person that's going to say, okay, and then get in there and do the work to figure it out. And, and, you know, the term cream rises applies cream rises to the top. The people who really care and really, who really try, um, you know, they rise to the top. And I think the most, the most important thing, at least how I try to live my life is like, there is no, there is no top every day. What can I do to get better? What can I do to be better today? For me at this point, the I don't is get the to, roof. <laughs> yeah, I don't get to do a whole lot of mix and audio. In fact, if you put me behind an audio console, I'd probably not be the person you'd want behind it. Because what I've what I've been doing is trying to pave the way so that there's enough jobs for people to come and do this work. Because um, you know, part of, part of our what we want to do is make it a more enjoyable experience for all the, of the audience through good audio, Mm -hmm. trained technicians. So a lot of my work's about preparing other people to do that job. So, yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys are doing um, some charitable things over there at, at here core. Yeah. Some, and like, you know, some, some more like social service based kind of community programs, um, you know, to educate the, educate the, the folks. Um, You talk more on that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've worked in every kind of restaurant and I've washed the dishes at Red Lobster and, you know, took out vats of grease from the barbecue restaurant and all that stuff. And you those are good experiences. Fancy, you work the fancy Red, red Lobster. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, Red Lobster dishwasher. <laughs> Wait, are those biscuits, are those biscuits, do they come in frozen? Oh, or yeah. are, they, are, are they salt bay and I'm in the back? No, actually, I remember there's a scoop. Yeah, no, they're not frozen. Not, at least they're okay. not when I was there. That was probably... Mm-hmm. 20 years ago or something, but oh, they probably uh, know. I think everybody should have to work at fast food just to see like <laughs> how ridiculous, how ridiculous like food service, you know, serving people food can be. Mm-hmm. But um, I also like for the right folks, the folks who are ambitious and like want to learn, I think that there's a lot of opportunity in this field. And this could be the kind of people that are into computer programming or tinkering or soldering you know figuring out electrical stuff that kind of thing there's not a whole lot of programs in schools anymore for tech you know tech ed technology education so what we're doing up at our spot in carrick is working to create a curriculum with the carrick high school and the phillips park rec center in the city of pittsburgh to kind of expose kids to these jobs in this you know event technology field um, and so we, we started forming a nonprofit with Pete Spinda 
who uh, <laughs> has been on your show before. Or he hey, has, shout, out, he shout out to Pete. Yeah, I mean, shout like, out to Pete Spinner because he's carried the torch a long way in getting all of the you know bits and pieces together to actually do this. Yeah, but what is that? Patonka Tonk? Well, Patonka Tonk's one of Pete's many projects. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, I, I've been on I've been on the loan together for the last uh, couple of weeks. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say I don't think we've had him on on Partners Pod. Yeah, no, he's never been, had him here. Yeah, no, we ain't him with a podcast yet, but uh, I've I've been on the loan together for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, fan of Patonka Tonk and like, yeah, he's definitely. He's definitely one of like the, the, the behind the scenes Pittsburgh legends. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's got a he's got a always producing, always history. always making making shit. Yeah. So funny story about Pete and me was we go way back. We went to Edinburgh, lived next door to each other, you know, for a couple of years. Uh, saw him playing some bands, and then come to Pittsburgh, start doing the pandemic shows, and then Patonka Tonk and the the uh, the one they did out at the nursery. The family, the family series. I can't remember the name of it. Weather permitting, but yeah, he's always just making. We're looking for those people, and we want to bring them in to our space. And it's kind of like a, if you ever heard the term Edisonian, like Thomas Edison had a lab, and ambitious people would come and work with him, and he would give them the tools and just let them go, and then he would steal their ideas, which is not what we're trying to do. But, I was about to say, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, like, we're not trying to steal any ideas. <laughs> that's not like, George Washingtonian. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait, that's we're just trying to get people so the well tools. for the folks coming in. You know. Like, <laughs> that's why that's why it's it's, it's Edisonian because you just remember Edison, yeah. <laughs> right? But you get the idea, right? Yeah. Like, if you got a right now, you could walk in there. There's a, a lighting console set up and all kinds of moving lights in the air. And you could play around with it and start making designs, you know, for a, a 15 or 16 year old kid, like who doesn't know what's in front of them or what's behind, you know, what, where they're going. But right. All of a sudden have some tools and some things to play with. Like that's what we're trying to do. So I mean, high technology for the people. How does that, I mean, like, how does that come about? I mean, what are some of the, what are some of the hurdles? Because, you know, you, I feel like a lot of folks, first and foremost, a lot of folks that I've, you know, especially in the art uh, and in, in entertainment industry or whatever, we're artists. And like we, because we understand that this isn't the most, um, you know, always appreciated uh, field. You know what I mean, monetarily, people love arts. I mean, oh, yeah. you get enough arts. Do they want to pay for it? Like, yeah, you know I mean, it's, a, uh -huh. <laughs> it's another thing. So like, as, you know, like in this industry or whatever, a lot of people are very kind hearted in the sense that they want to, you know, help, you know, others, but it's hard to do that. It's hard to actually get it done and find funding for that and whatnot. So like, what are, what are some of the challenges that you've faced and what are some of the, you know, like how, how have you gotten around them and, and, you know, taking yeah. it from, Hey, I want to help to actually, you know, putting it into motion. Yeah. Well, there's a lot to be said for consistent effort over time and just every day. You got to do a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit every day. And that really adds up. Um, it can be easy to, to get discouraged or, you know, to apply for a big piece of funding and not get it. Mm -hmm. um, we recently had one of those. We thought we had a chance to get a big grant to uh, renovate the space and we didn't end up getting it. But it's OK because, you know, we got a plan for that if, if should a moment arise in the future. And so, you know, every day we just keep trying to do a little bit more. Uh, I'm not sure if that's answering the question, but there's a lot to be said. For I mean, so, so a lot of it for you rolling with the punches, you're, you're so funding from a financial need, like, cause obviously something like this philanthropic has got to be funded. Um, yeah. I would imagine now, are you in the position to where a lot of the equipment that you use, you've already owned or do you like have to, find equipment because you don't know the demand like what i guess we're looking into the types of challenges to make a program like this work like is there a i don't want to say curriculum but at the end of it is there like a certificate or is there a project that you can promote yeah. like how does how does that work uh there's a lot there's a lot in there would so we think that certification is possible Mm -hmm. I live right on the main drag on Shadeland Ave. People come ripping okay. up and down here all the time. So 
Oh yeah, you know, yeah. You, well, you heard my man. He he had all the tech in his car. Yeah. That's for sure. Uh, all right, take take me back for one second. Oh, oh, with the, with help, the help me catch I'm my gonna... attention back. And I so, got a couple beers in me now too. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are the drinking partners, but I guess when we were asking about challenges, right? So every oh, yeah. type of philanthropic endeavor has its unique challenges. With yours, you, you have to supply people with equipment and technology, yeah. you know, in order to train. Uh, we've been really fortunate in personal. having, we've been really fortunate to have a, a few really like key large annual events. Teco is one of them. That's a Japanese yeah. animation festival. Uh, Jubilee is another, that's a Christian uh, college age yeah, student. And these are like big event, big annual events that really support both, you know, investing in new equipment and mm-hmm. you know, also like building up our team. Um, they're, they're big, they're important events. So, you know, I bring those up because that then gives us the, the privilege of having all of this gear at our disposal because we're, we're buying it specifically to do these events. And so mm-hmm. you know, most of the time it's just sitting in cases. It's not doing anything. There's no reason that a kid couldn't come over and, or anybody could, couldn't come over and learn how to use a Digico SD5, which is a pretty high end console. You know, a yeah. Digico SD. That sound like yeah, that sound like some uh, some Japanese kids <laughs> on like balls. Digico is European. Digico is European console. Uh, really, well, never super clean. That. You know, n- no no noise. Like super clean. Everything carries over one Ethernet cable. You know, you got 48 channels of audio coming in and one cable going back to the mm-hmm. home base. And uh, it's pretty sweet. So wait, can can you cure the the problems with the verses for Swiss Beats and Timberland? Like, are y'all doing that? Is that, is that something that y'all can do? Or is there like a training course within that? <laughs> you get the stems, maybe. <laughs> if you get the stems what was like yo like I, I, that, that's because we were talking about on the last or whatever but like you, what what is the issue because it's crazy how mm-hmm. these are like legends in the game mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. i mean you would think something like audio would be something they had mastered at some point and like not to say that they haven't <laughs> but <laughs> clearly the technology has changed or something has and you and, and they haven't and it's like one, I think it, it it speaks to, you know, like HearCore and Epicast and, and the folks behind the scenes that make that shit happen. Right. Yeah, you know I mean, like first and foremost. But two, like, you know, what like where is the disconnect? Like, you know I mean, what kind of what, what what's the technology out there that kind of is so like cheap. throwing off some of these it's old so, with Yeah. Such a low barrier to entry to get in the door and like you know, people can be on tour or whatever and go back to their hotel room and make a song on their phone and then they're releasing that song off of their phone you know i don't know specifically about the one you referenced i don't even think i've heard it um maybe we could play it or something listen to it right now i can i can give you a rundown on it but i think it's just the barrier to entry is so low you can get into making your own music for you know a thousand bucks you could buy a nice computer you can even do it cheaper than that and uh Every you know everybody's making it, and it's also well. If I can do it here, why would I go into a studio and pay seventy five bucks an hour? But the, at the end of the day, the the quality of the product really does shine through. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so like you know, but, so there were there were technical issues with the. I mean, like they couldn't get the sound to play through Instagram, and it's like, so you know, so with that technology, I would imagine. So I guess. With there being so many, like like you said, it's cheap. So you're used to you're used to working with studio type quality. You got studio dudes doing studio things, and now you're in like quarantine by yourself. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Yo, turn your cell phone because Instagram even is only cell phone, right? You yeah, it's only on your cell, yeah, computer. Like, so now you gotta figure out how to make all of this studio shit plug into your cell phone." Instagram mm-hmm. type shit. Like, is there a cord? Like, like, what is the, what's the like? Well, I thought they were just playing it in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so like, how how are folks how are folks transitioning in this 
in this age of Rona, like with the technology. It's like the same. It's like the same thing. Like some artists are really good artists, but they're terrible at being their own marketing person or whatever. Right. It's the same kind of thing. They're really good artists, but they might not be technical people. Instagram's tough because you can hack it, but yeah, it's got to come from your phone. So you may know that you want to go on Instagram. You may know that you want to play this song, but actually getting it to translate in a, in a good way. That's, that's tough. It's a little extra effort. Yeah. So extra. for you, so for you, with us not knowing like how this is going to look moving forward, how live events will look moving forward, you know, and then for example, with Instagram having its own private platform. So I don't know, can hear core affect that? Like how do you market to individuals who are like, well, I'm, I'm increasingly isolated with, with my need. Like I can handle all of this because every time I pick this up, it's getting yeah. better. It's getting more apps. I can do more. Um, and, and then working with platforms that maybe don't allow you to use your own stuff. We're all becoming producers right now. The world is becoming the world of producers. You guys have been doing it for longer than most people, right? With your podcast, you're producing this podcast. If people Buzzing want to stay podcast, we're I'm just sorry, drinking. Buzz, yeah, you're just drinking. We just <laughs> we just so talking much. shit, asking questions because we're drunk. <laughs> I ain't all those shit about shit, and that's why but somebody like Buzzy is so important, right? Like without him, you guys might just be on a Zoom call drinking a beer. We might not ever make it out past that. Yo, I'd be like, hey, can you hear anything on this shit? <laughs> like, well, I guess Did we record that? <laughs> <laughs> we're all these little silent ninjas behind the scenes, you know, yeah. and and we make the world go around. And honestly, we got hit first when the whole when this whole thing hit overnight. We lost months worth of business and had to adapt. And so we've adapted into video, obviously, and and try really like our focus is about the quality. You know, how could, what can we do to make mm-hmm. the quality better? But um, how how hard how hard is that transition? from you mean like audio to video and like an emphasis on that like because you know it is it it, audio versus video is much more expensive and you know with the live streaming and you know all of all of the things that are that are necessary internet and computers and all yeah there's there's a i would imagine there's a lot of shit that goes into transitioning from that or whatever like like how has that been well they're they're parallel right so like audio is just as important as video and a lot of things and uh, we've always had a pretty strong video department. Um, the the difficulty now has been everybody wants to make something, but they don't know how to do it necessarily. And so we've been like trying to coach folks along this path and everybody's coming to becoming a producer. Now you have to start thinking like, what do you look like on camera? And you know, mm-hmm. how do you sound? And uh, what are you going to talk about? How are you going to keep it interesting? In this world, people, you got somebody's attention span for 20, 30 seconds, maybe if you're lucky. What are you going to say to them when you have that 20 or 30 seconds? And, that, and people's heads just explode. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> I feel like uh, uh, there was an Eminem beat in the background. <laughs> <laughs> the way I am? The, the weak, weak arms of Sevy. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Lose yourself. You lose yourself. You know what I mean? Like, what you going to do? You got 30 seconds. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but that, It's like a thankless job for y'all then. Because we as a consumer, we walk in and it sounds good. Or if we're online and it looks and sounds good, that's just the expectation. Like, a lot of, I think it's within the industry is where the respect is a lot of times. Like, because if I'm an average consumer and the newest camera is out, well, then I'm just expecting that they're going to have the newest camera. It's going to look like yeah, that. Like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I don't even know, like, I mean, because, like, it, he, he got me thinking. He was like, yeah, you got to start thinking about what you look like on camera. And, like, I don't even know. Like, I'm trash. We just, been, we just been audio. It's been a podcast. So, like, we just was like, all right, well, let's just do this. There was no like, you know what? Let's make sure the angles is down, and we got like, mm-hmm. like we, there was there was no sound. Like we just like let's just turn the camera on and do some shit. So like yeah. we, it's, and that may uh, be how it all shakes out, and that may be perfectly fine, and everybody's totally cool with that. But you know, yeah, no, I mean, but like, but that's you could also so, push the envelope. But yeah, but that's the thing is that like that's the thing that you I mean like you know when you when you go into it, I think that's the difference in like you know like yeah everybody is a producer but does everybody have that producer mindset 
Like, are they thinking about the various, like, I mean, the shit that goes into, you know, and like, I feel like, I think, and that's, I think that's one of the things that artists in general have to do. And, and I, yeah, you know, I, like, I, I would imagine, you know, not imagine, but production is artful in a sense. There's science, mm-hmm. but yeah. there's also a bit of like, you know, there's that art into it. There's that creativity that, that goes into it or whatever. And like, I think that as artists in general, you know, like, like as a comedians, you know what I mean? Like we get on stage, like, yeah, cool. We got a good joke. Like on paper, punchline, that's cool. But like in the real world, how does that, you know what I mean? Like, how am I going to mm-hmm. play that out? How is it, am I going to be standing there, you know what I mean, with a mic? Am I going to be more, Delivery. You know, like, you know what I mean, more body movement or whatever? Like how, are, how's my inflection going to look? If yeah. I'm in, if I'm yeah. in a theater, if it's three, if I'm in the round, how do people in the back going to take this joke? You know what I mean? That are yeah. looking at me. So it's like, it, there's so and, many things outside of just the, you know, the one, like, okay, I got a good product. I got a good joke. There's all or whatever. And I would imagine the same thing with the, with the, with the production. What you're saying is like, all right, yeah, you know, like you got a good product. Even with us, we had a good product. But if you don't think about how that translates on different mediums and like, I mean, different crowds or whatever, and those, you know, like it, it's not going to be as successful. And like, those are the type of questions that I w- we wouldn't even think to ask. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of potential. I think the other thing that's really important is like, when do you actually drop it? Or like, when is your joke ready for, for the public? Right now, it, we're just spraying shit all over the place. Anybody can make anything. It's out there. And nobody's thinking about it. I, and I think, I do think cream will rise to the top over the long haul that that's going to be the theme. And so, you know, I just think a lot about it, man. And, and, you know, so between the Hazel theater and here Corp, I worked for three years at the Kelly Strayhorn theater as their like business I manager, Kelly. working directly I with Janera Solomon, Solomon, who taught me a lot about like what it means to be a producer and, um, you know, what, what it means to make art or help other people, bring other people in, make them feel welcome care for them so that they can make the best you know produce the best product you know so there's a whole lot of setup that's going on behind the scenes too just to get the artists ready and make them feel like they've been given you know good hospitality and can put on their best performance so you know i just hope that it does that the trend goes that the cream rises and that the quality of of certain things kind of rises to the top and that's that would be it'd be really interesting to see how it plays out here in the next next couple of weeks, months, year. Yeah, I think we're going to, I think a lot of, uh, uh, from comedy standpoint, I think a, a lot of great comedy is going to come out of it as far as stand-up. I, I don't know that you're going to see like a great stand-up while we're all at home, but as as things open, as we get more back into, you know, the norm or whatever, like I think you'll see a lot of talent, a lot of people working on some things, hustling, but there's a lot of hustlers doing stuff in it now, keeping us going. Uh, and that's important. And I guess we so, need you for both ends of it. Well, how can I flip the script and ask you a question? Like as comedians, I remember seeing something Chris Brock. I don't know if it was an article, but he would talk about how he would just go out like four, five nights a week and just cranking jokes out and paying attention mm-hmm. to what people laughed at, and then going back and cultivating those jokes and making those, you know, the ones he yeah, focuses so that, on. How do you get feedback now as a comedian? Like. <clears throat> Like, how do you know if you're on the right You could really, I mean, it depends. So you could just, you could send a tweet out as that, that has a punch, right? So you could just send a punchline out there, see how people respond. And you could craft a joke around it if you want to. Uh, you could, instead of having a joke, I guess you could turn that into a sketch if, if you know, if you're feeling up to it. Like, I, I think right now there are people hustling to make something happen. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some people cooking. Yeah, you know I mean, it just depends on how you how you want to play it, and, and what your threshold for you know creativity is. I guess. Yeah, I mean, we like we've been we've been using like I, I've I've certainly been using I mean, social media as like a open mic for years, like throwing some shit mm-hmm. out there, just kind of like whatever. Every once in a while, you'll get some shit that like hits and people. Are like, oh, I like that. I like that thought. I like that idea. I like that mm-hmm. premise or whatever. People and then connect with it. And then playing with it on stage and developing it from there or whatever. And even with the podcast, like this podcast has been, I mean, there's been, you know, it, it's, it's still, 
you know, like it's not always comedy. And that was the, that was a thing when we first got into it was which was weird because we came into it as comedians. So we came into it just like, all right, let's just make it funny as shit and just be funny all the time. <laughs> and Buzzy was like, listen, man, y'all not going to be funny every fucking time, like every minute for fucking 60 minutes. It's cause he, that's because he listens to the podcast. Yeah, like for 200. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like for, and like you, like it's going to like, yeah, it's going to just be there. But like, it doesn't always have to be, you know, whatever. So, you know, we we allowed ourselves to kind of like be more natural in the conversation and, and the interviewing or whatever. But like a lot of comedy has come out of it you know, a lot of, a lot of premises or whatever. And we're not like, it's like working it. It's not like, I right, well, let's set this up so that I can like work this material in there. It just shit happens. And it's like, you know what? I could probably, you maybe run with that a little bit. Yeah. You know I mean, and like, you know, and it goes on stage or whatever. Um, so like, I think that at least, you know, like with that, you know, utilizing those two tools kind of, I mean, but like, as far as, as far as what comic, what it looks like now, like we haven't, we haven't performed outside of yeah i don't know what I, i'm probably trash on stage now yeah like, like <laughs> it's, been, it's been like like usually like usually if i go like a good two weeks without being on stage i feel weird as shit like i mean my timing is a little off timing like, is not good yeah it's a it's it's, it's weird so like it is it's gonna be like stage life is like and like, there's a lot of folks doing, you know, the online comedy thing or whatever. And like, I don't know, I, I haven't done it. I don't feel comfortable just doing like in front of the Zoom or whatever. So like, I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to more or less continue to push comedy, other aspects that aren't yeah. straight stand up. And I mean, most stand ups. They do stand up, but they do other things. There's very few people right. that just are pure stand ups. You know what I mean? So, like, mm -hmm. that's the beauty of it of comedy is that, you know, you don't just have to do this one medium. Like, you know, most comedians have a few. So, something like this, all right, cool, we can't do that. All right, well, let's focus on the, the, the podcasting aspect of it. Let's focus on the writing aspect of it. Let's focus on those others. But, like, and then whenever crowds come back, we'll, we'll figure it out. I think we're fire. lucky too. Cause Is that what you're trying to say? I don't. I don't think it's gonna be that. I think. I think no. we're lucky. So like the art of the interview is to me, in my estimation, hard to master. Like in order to be able to interview someone, pull information, but make it entertaining and funny and stuff. So I think that keeps us on our toes too. Like we're in a privileged position to be able to interview a bunch of different type of people. Some people maybe have a more muted personality, but we got to bring that same level of humor, and we got to find it with a different guest who has a different focus, a different background and all that. We on the spot with it. So I feel like we never fall off too crazy because it's hard. Like how many people have you watched do like really good interviews, like entertaining, not just informative, but like, you know, that was a dope, fun interview. Like I enjoyed that. <laughs> That's what most people are thinking right now. <laughs> I was like, I don't even, I, I'm not even comfortable. I can't even co-sign on that. I ain't even, I, ain't, but I mean, but I do, but, but yeah, I, like I, I agree. Like the funny side, I'm not even worried about as much as the interviewing side of it. Yeah. You know I mean, like, cause like we, it's easy to, 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 to rail off some jokes and this, that, and the other or whatever. But did you, did you learn anything about the guest? Did you like, did you, I mean, was, was it a worthwhile or was it just two dudes like with a, an endless string of jokes and like, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it is what it is. Like, yeah, I mean, some guests, <laughs> <laughs> some guests you ask a Episode question. Episode two like, of two. Yeah. Like <laughs> sometimes you'd be like, so tell me about yourself. They'd be like, well, Tuesday. Yep. And it's like, <laughs> Well, all right. Think about all right. All right. All right. <laughs> so that's what you're gonna get. But it's but it's the it's the it's the it's it's the uh, for us at, at least. You know what I mean, like it's the the dedication to the interview, and first and foremost, like, hey, this is about the guests. First and foremost, how do we make them comfortable? How do we learn the most about them? And then the entertainment kind of like you know follows afterwards and whatnot. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, I mean, with the moving into, you know, this, these Rona times and like we're going to be in this until there's a festival. I mean, until there's a, uh, 
a vaccine. <laughs> oh, the festival gonna end it all. Yeah. <laughs> festival va- vaccine festival. Vaccine Fresh fest gonna end it all. <laughs> <laughs> the vaccine fest. <laughs> Yo, I'm I'm buying tickets to that festival, bro. Yeah, me Yo. too. Let me buy in advance. Well, you know, some people not feeling the whole vaccine thing, though. How do y- y- y'all like vaccines? Y'all rock with like some people. Like you know what? That vaccine come out. I'm not doing it. Wifey over here shaking her head right now. I mean, but I, I have a divided household. <laughs> I did. I did all the vaccines thus far, and they've worked out for me. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I got. You never I, call I, I ain't got no money. Measles. I ain't never had smallpox. Yeah. Like, so it's been, it's been working for me. Like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm a, real. Yeah, like I've had no real negative side effects from any of that. Yeah, you know I mean, so I'm, I'm a, you know what? I'm, I'm a go with. They batting a thousand for me at least. They batting a thousand <laughs> right now. It's all, it's always a win. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. We, we got yeah, a, we got a whole early vaccinated red blue situation. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you got tuberculosis. <laughs> 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 oh, <shit. laughs> so they've been. I got all. I got all. I got all my clearances to get into. You know, you couldn't get into some college classes without. Oh, <laughs> like, they like, yo, you can't get a degree. <laughs> <laughs> True. Like polio ain't even contagious. Why I got to do this? But you know, you got to. You got to do it, bro. I'm just putting myself at risk. No, not at our university. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you all, you all, you all uh, up to date over there at, at here for? Yeah, I think so. Um, Is that a part of the onboarding process? What getting vaccinated? <laughs> y'all, y'all gotta, y'all gonna be. This is the onboarding process. You want to hear the onboarding process at here Corp? I would, Some yes. kid shows up, twenty something. You know, is a musician. This is how it typically is. People, musicians that come around here, course, and uh, they're like, "Yeah, I want to get involved." And and it's usually like, "All right, there's a pile of shit over there. You go clean that up, and then you just see what they do." We'll hire people on the spot. I've seen my, you know, Dave, the company owner, Dave. I've seen him down on the north side. People like, "Can I get fifty cents?" He's like, "Come with me. I'll pay you twenty bucks an hour." He's like, "Nah, man, that's good because we'll put you to work." But. You know, whoever comes through the go clean that pile of shit up challenge usually ends up sticking around for a while. Yeah. The hazing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, you... Oh, go ahead. You yeah, know, hazing, hazing is a real, like, it's real psychologically. If you put a lot of work into something, you're more dedicated to that shit. I mean, so. Uh, military hazes. It's real as well. Well, it's not hazing. I mean, it's not anything like terrible. No, 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 no but, like but that's that. exactly. But, I mean, but. But that's what it is, like, because I mean, if you look at if you look at society, if you look at onboarding processes and, and to, to a lot of degree, I mean, it's like you got to kind of you got to you got to work. You got to do the grunt work. Grunt work yeah. is grunt work because it's grunt work. And it's like, all right, how dedicated are you to actually learning this craft? Because there's a there's a cost to this. Knowledge has always been power. Mm-hmm. Knowledge is a premium. You know what I mean, so like yeah. you got to work for that. In the audio world, you work with that. You don't just come in and we start giving you CEO secrets. That's not. Yeah. yeah. In the audio world, that first couple of weeks is, uh, you know, wrapping cables up. Yeah, day wrapping after cables. After day. Yeah. You gotta learn how to wrap the cables the right way so they don't get yep. all in knots. Absolutely. There's the nothing worse than a knot in the middle of a 250 foot piece of Ethernet cable or whatever. Ooh. The fundamental like day messed up. I'm dealing with putting the water hose on the thing on the side of the house without it getting yeah, twisted up. I haven't mastered yep. that yet. <laughs> yeah. My my shit is all jumbled in the back. Like there's there's no it's <laughs> like I just you I get just, frustrated. Yo, I pull it out and then I, I like I, I put the thumb on it so it go further. Yeah you know I mean like I <laughs> <laughs> I just there it is. All right, we're gonna put that back. It's, I'll see you next put year. Put your thumb <laughs> over it to go in the bucket to get more suds. You get more bubbles if you put the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta unkeep this. Ah. Oh. Well, 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 move everything I need to hose off over here, and I'll just carry that shit back. <laughs> so, um, I mean, like, so what is uh, what is what is what is what is the next what does the next year look like in the internet in in, in the entertainment production side in, in, in your in your best um, suit saying? Man, I don't know. I think. My honest, my my opinion, personal opinion, is that we're November twenty one, November twenty twenty one. I think is when we'll be able to see significant public gatherings again. 
in a safe way. Um, that may be a lot longer than anybody wants to accept, and it may not be that long, but I think that's realistic. Um, we're going to try some stuff this winter. We're going to see, you know, if we can usher people through an event without killing them. At some point, you're going to have to be comfortable going out in public knowing that you're at risk. And I right. just, you know, as a company, like we're not the producers. We're the company that helps the producers. And so we're really taking cues from, from you guys in a lot of ways. Um, and we have people that want to do public events in June. And I, I said no, because until we see what happens, this last couple of weeks, people start wearing their masks half-assed and being around more groups of people and not respecting distance standards. Uh, cover your nose, we'll see. man. We'll see. Yeah, gotta, you got to cover Got to cover the nose. It's not doing anything if it's down here. But no, no new noses, man. We're gonna see. <laughs> no new noses. And you know, there's a there's a group of conspiracy theorists that think it's all just gonna disappear overnight. That could also happen. <laughs> no, no, so, that, it's not. It's not gonna also can happen. I don't. It, it, no, whoever the fuck is listening to this, it's not just gonna fucking disappear. You motherfucking Trump pansies, like yeah, Trump like, You motherfuckers. Get off your chest. Get it off your chest. <laughs> Listen, they canceled the NBA, bro. They 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 yo, shut it down. Like yo. when you shut down something like that, it's real. This ain't this ain't for play play. Yeah, yeah we were we were we were supposed to be on the NBA All Star games, and that whole thing just canceled. A word. Uh, we had a, a phone call with the Olympic group wow. earlier in the week, last week, late last week. They're talking about how they're gonna. Is there, is there any possibility to make some kind of Olympics happen? Um, so then what is, so how do they, how does sanitation look for, for your industry within that? Because while you're not, you know, total shit interacting, shit. so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you still have to be there. Yeah. But, so now you're a part of like the number count and like what sort of provisions are they discussing for you all as far as like, all right, you can do an event, but tech and, and, and sound have to, you know, do X, Y, and Z. We're so not even only have. have so many audio, you know what I mean? Like it's going like when they, when we roll out and we can start doing, you know, public events, they're going to obviously have a, a people count and you, you're going to factor into that. So it's like, yeah. how do you, how do you think that you can schedule or a shift of individuals? Like how do you guess how many people you would need knowing that there's always some sort of, you know, obstacle that's going to come up that you can't prepare for well, we're we're very day by day right now. We're day by day, mm-hmm. and I don't want to speculate on the future. So, yeah, I think yeah. I think for us, it's important to factor the safety of our team and the safety of the people who would be at these yeah. events. We don't want to encourage, you know, we don't want to encourage people to come out by going setting up a big stage somewhere. That's just going to encourage people to congregate. So, you know, we're just every day. I'm reading. I'm reading news articles. I'm keeping up on it. And until we all feel comfortable, we're not. We're not coming back. So I was glad to hear you say, "Day the Fresh Fest is off," because you know I'm still hold, I still have that hold on the, not off, but online. I still have that hold, like it's going to happen. But I'm looking at it here, and we're coming into June, and I'm thinking, "There's no way we're coming back." It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You know what I mean, there's no like, way we're coming back in yeah. August. Yeah, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense that anybody is uh, congregating in any large capacity until there's a vaccine available. I mean, so. You know, like what that looks like. I mean, it's it's adaptation, and that's what the art has always been. That's what mm-hmm. you know. Production, like you said, it's 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 thinking on your feet. So it's you know how do you how do you transition and bring people together in a way that's you know communal and safe um, from a distance. And uh, you know, if you're if you're anything, if you're worth your salt, you got to figure out those problems. I mean, like you got to figure out how to do that. So I'm always you know same thing with you. Like I'm looking at like, you know, I'm looking at the folks using utilizing the technology, going live, doing, you know, I mean, various events, um, and and seeing, you know, like how how. You know what I mean, how to how to do that, how to move forward. Um, and I appreciate I appreciate what y'all are doing um as well, um, in that same thing. And uh it's it's public safety first because nobody wants to be the um nobody wants to be the event that they trace the Rona to. And then and, and like no. Rona, the Rona is very traceable. <laughs> 
I don't know if y'all notice or not, but it, it's very. If y'all listen, yeah, at they home, they they lock it down Courtney. It's like yeah, li- listen at home, like that shit is very traceable. You don't want to be the motherfucker where they're like, eh, da, 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 da. oh, you and all of these motherfuckers. That's yeah. that's a, that, that's the end of your brand, man. Whatever you were doing beforehand is not. It, it's not worth it. It doesn't. It doesn't seem worth it for anybody listening or whatever. Like if you're thinking about trying to like push that event so that you can make a couple of extra or whatever in that very interim, it's not going to be worth it in the long run. First and foremost, the optics are going to look mad weird. You know I mean, like people are going to be like, ah, what is you really chasing here? What's the what's the purpose? So you're, you're, you're choosing a side in some sense or whatever. And two, again, there's that risk that like I don't know what insurance companies is covering. But there's no damage control for uh, there's not enough money to, to damage control Rona these days, man. So no. Rona provision is gonna be like that's just gonna be we going it's gonna be you have to get Rona insurance. Like more, more, you gotta get you gotta get the United Rona. Uh, I don't want to get that. You gotta insure people. <laughs> you gotta insure people. You gonna have any live events? You gotta Rona insure folks. Yeah. That's what they, they need to. If you fly to order, you need Rona insurance because they out there wild. They been <laughs> they out there on the beach. They down the Atlantic wild. Got to cut them off. <laughs> Rona. Well, <laughs> you know the most we can do right now is just try to like again like focus on the quality. And we're going to be broadcasting some stuff here soon, um, bringing small groups of artists together. Like bands, people who play in bands, pretty much they all live together. A lot of times they actually mm-hmm. do live together. They're playing together. So they're they're in these same circles. But we feel like we could bring in small groups of artists and, and showcase them, make them look and sound really good and kind of try to up that quality level. So next, yeah, this Friday. This Friday was going to be the first one. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to be like a stream, like a live yeah, we're, performance? Or? We're calling it Live at 25. Live at 25 is the is the uh, YouTube channel. And uh, we we... We've got some older content. We're, when this first happened, we started this whole fundraising thing. Uh-oh. 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 Okay, all right. We're all good. Yeah. <laughs> Live at 25. Check it out. Live some birds. There's some more birds. Bird watching. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you, you and you, that's, you got to get used to that with your live streams now. Like when you listening to your people, you can see how what type of neighborhood they live in now. Like how many <laughs> times the cops roll by, how many little kids you hear arguing in the background. Like, <laughs> hey, 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 I'm on the podcast right now. Hey, hey, listen, no, nah, nah, bro, I don't want any. No, bro, listen, I'll be with you. But hey, <laughs> yeah, you you see me. I've been looking over my shoulder every three minutes. We got kids running in and out the house. We got people walking by. Fans my neighbor, my neighbor was like, come get this hammock off my porch. <laughs> she came and yelled at me. <laughs> they don't know that you're doing something right now. Like, you, you <laughs> see I'm sitting in front of a computer screen talking, bro. Like, put your hand signals together. But I feel like but I feel like that's the norm now. It's going to be a, a new, like, yeah, I mean, motherfuckers mm-hmm. is just going to just be, like, I, I've been I've been waiting for, for neighbors to start. Like, I've, been, I've seen a couple utilizing their porches more. I've always been a porch mm-hmm. dude, but like I'm starting to see more neighbors coming out and like kind of like but a lot of motherfuckers have been walking and I'm starting to see a more like pop up on porches. Like we might get back to an age where we start talking to people that like we live next to, which is not a thing that I've done yeah. in, since I like I left my mom's house. Let's pause on that. I didn't talk to my <laughs> neighbors a couple times. I'm, I'm not sold. <laughs> 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 He's like, ah, man. This is you never knew how important that threshold was between your your front door and your porch until now. Like you, it's it's a whole new world when you step on the porch. Like sons, how you walk out? Like, ah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, it's it's crazy. Um, but I, I I do I do hope. I'm just I'm wondering what like certain industries like fashion. What is that going to look like if everybody's doing stuff at home? Because you're starting to see people in their element now. Like you're seeing. You know, Trevor Noah, he's doing this the, the late show from his living room. It's a swag-ass living room, but it's a mm-hmm. living room nonetheless where uh, he did his own shape-up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're seeing everybody looking 
looking nutty uh, out here. I've been, I've been I, I I didn't want to like I've been hating to say it, but you was ahead of the curve with all the like the, the what is it you the athleisure athleisure man Bro, athleisure like, I put on jeans I'm athleisured out right now. I ain't been on jeans and like it's just been straight sweats. I've been comfy as oh. shit. I'm like I don't I I I, I should you not like I I mean I had I had to leave the house yesterday and I was like well there might be a possibility that I might see somebody. So I'm like, let me put on a, all done that. some clothes. <laughs> and I looked at the jeans and I was like, that's just, nah, it's just not. And I don't know when I'm going to be comfortable going back to jeans, man. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's I, I settled on jeans. joggers, which was the closest. <laughs> it was fancy sweats. Like, you know what I mean? That's about as, as, as I, oh. I can make jeans. Because um, in this, in the, during the COVID, bro, like, the one time you got jazzy and went out, you got you got real spicy and went out and you saw nobody. You went and got gas and came home. You was like, ah, that wasn't even worth it. I done added to my repertoire. I got some slides on now. I'm rocking the slides. I was like, oh, I never, never walked around in the slides with the socks. Like it's the most comfortable thing ever. I don't, oh, you, you I don't know why. Slides and socks, dude. Now I was out. Yeah, it was my bro. It was I don't my know birthday. Why I got the sneakers. I got the Jordan Retro Three. Ooh, 1988 I like throwbacks. Yeah, Ooh. I've just been wearing these around the house, man. I mean, they got well, all right. You got a new pair. Uh-huh. You gotta, you gotta break them in. Them Jones, is, them Jones five. No, nah, you can't hoop in though. Don't, don't, don't do it like that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't. You get the team Jordans to hoop in. Okay. Yeah, I've just been. When we gonna, when we gonna discuss that the Jordans have gotten progressively more whack? Why, like, why we don't ever talk about that? Like Jordan twenty eight is not fire, bro. Like nobody. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep letting like, them slide. Um, I like I I only get I only get the cheap ones that are the 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 sale Jordans. And I mean, <laughs> the these are such a these are such a throwback for me, man. Like eighty eight. I just remember like Jordan. You know. Yeah, I think one through twelve, one through thirteen, you're good. Yeah, you're good. One, three, you said them. You got the threes, the gray threes. Them Jones five. I'm sorry. I will get. I get. I get to talking speakers all the time. I think Buzzy, Buzzy is tired of us. He done muted himself. He's cursing us out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we get. We. <laughs> we yeah, I sent yeah, it in the geez. chat. <laughs> in, the, in the chat now. I mean, hey, now. I sent it in the chat, Jack, bro. <laughs> Buzzy, when Buzzy put the mute on, that's the equivalent of wrap it up, B. Wrap <laughs> your wrap it up, B. <laughs> Can't That's make the audio up to quality. <laughs> no, no, no. This is so, um, I guess, uh, I mean, tell us where, uh, I guess, first and foremost, let us know what your next event is. <laughs> Laughing at me, yeah? <laughs> Are you still there? Everything got really still. What's going yeah, on now? Yeah, no, when's, when's your next event, Alex? When's my next event? I don't have one. Well, well yeah. I mean, well, you got the release. Friday, we're going to go live on Friday with the Buffalo Rose group. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Dip our toes um, in the let, water. Let people, let people uh, know how they can support the 25 care guy. The not a supporter. What you got, where they can find that information on that. Yeah. Um, well, 25caracav.com. If you want to learn more about the project, uh, herecore.com, which is a very poorly maintained website of our own, you know, it sounds good. We can do, yeah, <laughs> herecore.com. <laughs> check it out. Last updated in 2013. <laughs> and, uh, but, but that 25 caracav.com, you know, you'll find, you'll find everything you want to know there. Yeah. I right, don't you guys know what it could. And we appreciate you coming through. They let the people know where they can find us or what it may look like, or I don't know what to say at this Man, point. This so, is- uh, 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 well, I mean, look out for uh, Fresh Fest, Digi Fest. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we're going to go digital. And, uh, you know what I mean? If you're looking for drinking partners, you can find us on epicastnetwork.com slash partners pod. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Lipson, Google Play, and Spotify. Under Drinking Partners, and you can find us on IG, Twitter, and Facebook at Partners Club. Yes, we want to thank. Hold on, I gotta wait. Cause look, we got a bunch of Meek Mills <laughs> in my neighborhood. You know, you see, 
They still on the floor. <laughs> yeah, we want to thank our guest, Alex Barr, for coming through, man. And listen, if you have any needs, live events, be it uh, even online, you know what I'm saying? You got to get your audio right. You know what I'm saying? Check out Hearcore, man. They they are what they say they are. You know what I'm saying? Look out for 25 Carrick Ave. And what's what's the Friday? What is it? The um, What's the series? What's the title of the series? I'm sorry. Live at 25. Live at 25. Live at 25. Yes. I knew. I had it and I couldn't remember. But check out Live at 25. As always, Drinking Partners is the crew. Epicast is the family. And we out of here. Even though we're still on here. (laughs) 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 We still kind of here. I've been sweating this whole time, bro. Like, this is nuts. Yeah, it got hot. I used it, but I got to be smooth with it. I can't just be the only one on the joint. Like, (laughs) <laughs> like the, the sun came out all weird like i like i ain't i was like oh what the, like my lighting changed like <laughs> all that shit is 